and welcome to my channel. Well, still locked down, um, so I can't actually get out and shoot very much. But what I can do is do what I've been meaning to do for some time, which is do a kind of a long-term review on a film that's become kind of an old friend of mine, and that is HP5, HP5 Plus by Ilford. Um, though I've been using this stuff since. I can't even remember when I started using it. Um, I've used Ilford film all the time. I've been taking photographs for black and white. Um, and I started using HP5 when I was in my teens. Um, and it's simply always been the automatic choice for me. Um, 400 ISO is a really, really useful speed. Um, it's not so fast that it's um, crazy with the grain. And it's it's not so slow that you can't use it in pretty much any situation. It pulls well, it pushes well in processing, um, and it's not the most technologically advanced film, um, even that Ilford do. I mean, the T-grain films, um, Ilford Delta, um, it, they are technologically more advanced but there's something about HP5 that's always kept me coming back. I made my living as a theatre photographer for quite a few years and that was my film of choice for the time that we shot black and white which was most of the early part of that career. Um, and it always behaved flawlessly. Um, it has tremendous latitude, um, exposure latitude. You can you can screw up massively and still get pretty good results from it. It's just a really very forgiving film indeed. Um, I buy it in bulk these days, um, but I've I've always had rolls of it lying around, and, and for theatre shoots I'd shoot five or ten rolls at a time, you know. And, um, and you, there is something to be said for using a film until you know every single way that it will react with every developer that you're likely to put it through um, and in every situation you're likely to shoot it. Now, I'm fully aware that there are all kinds of fascinating specialist films that um, you know, high contrast or um, very fine grain or, or whatever. Um, and I use that sort of thing and I, I have fun using that, but if I've got to get a result, I will always go back to HP5. Um, it's almost become a sentimental attachment now. Um, when I get a new camera, I always want to put a roll of HP5 through it. Um, and I'm trying to work out what it is over other films that I've tried that has um, influenced me so much. I use Tri-X, as most people um, will do, Kodak Tri-X, a few times. Um, I was, it was okay. Um, I was less than possibly wowed by it, and I'm not really quite sure why. I think it was more contrasty. Um, which I quite like the softness of HP5, which means that you can, if you want to, boost the contrast up, but you, you're never fighting that contrast. Um, you've always got detail there. Um, and I do believe that the grain was possibly, maybe on the Trix formulation that I used back in the day, um, the grain was maybe just a little bit heavier. Um, but then, you know, Nowadays, um, films like Ilford Delta have the 400 speed that um, HP5 has, but less grain. Um, why don't I use those? Um, I just don't, I haven't used them, and I don't really you know, teach an old dog new tricks, you know? Um, so. HP5 is just my go-to. It's my go-to for 35mm, it's my go-to for uh, 120 roll film. Um, I haven't actually tried it 
on five by four yet, um, which is a terrible admission. Um, but then I haven't had a chance to shoot enough five four. Um, no doubt I will use it and love it. Um, so I'm going to show you some results um, from back in the day when I was shooting theatre photography regularly. Um, and um, take a look. Um, this is what HP5 will do. Um, there's uh, a few faces you'll probably recognise uh, amongst these. I don't name drop. First off. Well, there you go. I don't um, mess around changing things from um, box speed. Uh, all of those images, I think, were shot not metered at 400 ISO, and, and I tend to be a little bit generous with the, the readings and, and um, open things up a bit so that there's detail in the shadows. So technically, I suppose I, I would err towards rating the film at about 320 ISO, but that's no biggie. Um, quite easy to expose it at 400, it's just got enough latitude. Um, easy, to, easy to work with, easy to develop, um, dry as flat so it scans easily. Um, I love it. Um, and will continue to love it as long as they continue to produce it. So go out and buy some because that probably means that they'll have an assured future and will be shooting film particularly HP5, for years and years and years to come. Um, so, I've got other things coming up. Um, a little taster. Um, I have... Uh, that's not a Leica, although it looks like one. Um, that's actually a Canon rangefinder. So I'll be doing a little review on that, and talking a bit about that, and a bit about wrist straps, because I made that, and I'm quite chuffed with that. And uh, I find wrist straps to be really, really cool on rangefinder cameras. So, 
If you've liked what you've seen, then hit that old like button. And if you want to see more of me rambling on about photography and general stuff, then think about subscribing. Um, and I will be back soon with another episode. So take care. Bye. My favourite film, um, the film that's been with me all the way through my photographic career. Um, and uh, there's a cat just walked in. Hello, cat. Okay, let's just check on that. My favourite film. Um, it's uh, something that we doobly 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 wob 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 per. The earliest photographs that I've got that I took um, as a serious photographer when I was in my teens um, were on HP5 and I, you know, I'm talking a lot of absolute cobblers love trying out new films um, I did a uh, big believer in getting to know a film really really well and using that and getting to know every single and um, I'm gonna spend a bit of time um, talking an absolute load of rubbish <laughs>